Now let us see how the water come back to the ocean. I told you the source is the ocean. From the ocean that is by evaporation the water evaporates into the atmosphere. So thereby condensation the water come back to the land. So here the major source of fresh water is rain, rainfall. Whenever it rains on the land the water it flows into the water bodies. Some water gets submerged or seeps into the ground. And one more thing we have mountains with ice deposited over there. The snow melts in the mountains like Himalayas. So the melted snow it flows into the rivers that is one more source. But majorly the clouds that are created by the evaporation in the ocean these clouds they travel to the land they get condensed and they turn to rain. So the rain it falls on the land. Once the rain it falls on the land that is on the mountains and on the land it flows into the rivers. So primarily the rain water it goes to the rivers. The rivers carry the water for a long distance. They distribute the water to ponds and lakes. Some river water is used to fill the ponds and lakes. The ponds and lakes are refilled by the river water. They are fueled by the river water. They are charged by the river water. And the river water anyway it is divided into some canals and it is distributed to so many places on the land. It is used for agricultural purpose and different different purpose. Finally the river is connected to the sea. So the river water is finally going back to the sea. But not all the water. Some of the water is seeping down into the ground as ground water. Underground water. So this underground water is used by the people in the form of wells. If you dig a bore well or a open well you will find some water. When you will find some water? If that area the ground has got some water if it is having any water then you can find the water by digging. So how your groundwater is recharged that is by the rainfall regular rainfall. If the condition is a drought you don't have rainfall from past 5 to 6 years then you cannot find single drop of water under the ground. If the water is over exploited used then the amount of recharge then you cannot find even a single drop of water. It is happening in many cases. In many of the places the farmers for their agriculture they are over exploiting the groundwater. They are taking lot of water out of the ground. So that much amount of water is not compensated not recharged into the ground. Even for certain industries, for uh, drinking water industries, cool drink industries, they are exploiting the ground water. They are taking out the ground water. So the ground water has to be recharged by regular rainfall. So the water that is falling on the land it goes to the uh, rivers. Sometime it is going to the ponds and lakes. So all these water bodies are charged by the rainwater and excess water is flowing back into the sea or ocean. Right. So this is the way how the water is circulated. Here what plays a major role here? Rainwater it rains at some times not all the time. So the water is available. The fresh water is available in the form of rainfall but we cannot completely utilize that on the immediate moment. And at the same time we cannot completely store the rainwater. We cannot completely harvest the rainwater. But there are certain steps by building dams and reservoirs we can store the rainwater for some period and we can use it when it is needed during the agricultural time, cropping time or summer season. Right. So the governments they make plans to build as much as many as possible dams to store the rainwater. Okay. So by that the water can be conserved, the water can be preserved. And even by making so many arrangements to make the ground water level increase when there is a rainfall, if the water is allowed to seep down then you can get more water. But what is happening these days? We are not allowing the rainwater to percolate into the ground because we are plastering the roads with cement. Earlier the roads were made of mud. 
there used to be lot of grass and vegetation so because of the vegetation and muddy surface water can easily penetrate through that and it can deposit in the under layers as a ground water but the conditions are different now in cities not only in cities even in villages you go there you can find the cement plastered roads we are not leaving any free soil we are not leaving any grass growing vegetation so the amount of water that recharges the ground is very less and there is a very uh, less decrease in rainfall the so disturbance in the rainfall pattern suddenly there will be a huge rainfall leads to floods suddenly there won't be any rainfall leads to drought so those are the conditions arising it's all arising because due to the environmental factors that we will study in the other lesson but here understand that how water is circulated from ocean or sea to the land land to the sea again how it is circulated and how this is operated by the water cycle so rainfall is very very important because it is one of the process which is circulating the water as i told you that proper rainfall is important well distributed rainfall is important in the monsoon season if the rainfall patterns are very good with a proper gap that you forget the rainfall i get you get the proper amount of rain then you can utilize the rain water but what happens if it rains heavily suddenly for a very long time for a period of 7 days there is a huge rain due to the cyclone so what happens if you get such a heavy rain if there is such a heavy rain the water bodies will be filled up first the water bodies they get filled up ponds lakes rivers they get filled up then they overflow so if the overflow what is happening overflow of water overflow of water it submerges the low lying areas so low lying areas lower areas are submerged crops are submerged animals are submerged leads to death leads to destruction of crop leads to damage of houses this is called as floods what is that floods when it rains heavily it leads to floods overflow of water accumulation of water stagnation of water leads to flood is called as floods it's because of heavy rainfall so what is what happens in the floods the crops are completely submerged so the farmer get huge loss animal the cattle they get submerged in the water they die and houses are damaged property is lost people lose their houses so they need to buy each and every item again because it is lost it got wet in the rain rain water stagnant water in many places the poor huts the houses that they build they get destroyed and collapsed because of the flood water this is all happens because of the flood soil get damaged soil erosion takes place so all this happens because of the floods right so floods when floods result floods are resulted during a cyclone cyclone is a heavy rainfall it's a heavy rainfall for a long period so there must be proper plan ready with us in case of floods beforehand we can take measures to control the damage of the floods and all such anyway it's not completely under our control as it is a nature sign we cannot completely predict and do the necessary but we can do certain steps to reduce the loss that is caused by the floods so here the question is what if it rains heavily there is one more question what if it rains very less what do you call it you call it as drought drought is a condition where there is less rainfall so scarcity of water the ground water is completely used up so no more ground water in the in situations like drought in that condition if you go to village the village which is in drought just if you 
hit the hand pump you do not get any water. You see the wells they are dried up, there is no water underground, there is no water body close by to that village, no lake, no pond, nothing. Then how? There is no water at all, so no grass is growing. If there is no grass, no animal can live. Cows and buffaloes are fed by grass. So, if animals are not there, milk is not there for children. Food is not there, no vegetables are grown. So, the drought it leads to such a condition that animals they get starved and die. People they do not have any job to do because if water is available, somebody will start agriculture. Then somebody will get job to work as agricultural labor. So, as there is no water, there is no activity, agricultural activity, no jobs, no food. So, the people will migrate from the place to other places where there is job, where there is food, they leave their villages like that and they go to other places. So, drought is such a condition, the scarcity of water leads to unemployment, that leads to starvation, hunger deaths and all these problems. So, it is uh, raining is very, very important, but how it should be? It should not be heavily raining and it should not be very less. So, now water is very important, but it depends upon the rainfall pattern whether the water will be heavily available at some times and scarcely available at some times. Anyway, we cannot control the rainfall, but what is there in our hands? We can do one thing to maintain the proper supply of water or proper availability of water to everybody, that is the water conservation. That means, we need to take care of the water. So, we have to conserve the water. In the beginning of the lesson, we have seen how much water is used by a family per day, right? So, we are using that much of water. See that when there is no use, you can stop wastage of water. When you are brushing, you can off the tap. So, by that you will reduce or stop the wastage of water. While brushing just you keep the tap open, all the water is flowing out, how many liters you are wasting. So, likewise we can reduce the wastage of water. And moreover, how to develop the plants, how to harvest the rainfall, rainfall, rainfall or the rain water, because it is the source of fresh water, we can harvest the rain water. Rain it does not come whenever you want, it does not come as per your requirement, just it comes naturally. But you, if you are harvesting, if you are properly storing the rain water, then you can utilize it whenever you are in need, right. So, that is water conservation. So, in this water conservation, rain water harvesting is the technique that helps us to store the rain water for the future use. Let us see how the technique is used, rain water harvesting. So, for the rain water harvesting, so you have a building with a slab that is a flat roof. So, when there is rainfall, the rain water is collected on your floor that is on the slab, that is collected on the roof of your house. So, you can use this roof as a storage tank and this water can be taken out through pipes whenever it is needed. This is technique number one. So, everybody they can have a flat roof, a very big flat roof. So, during the rainfall, the water is collected into the roof of the building, so that it is stored and with the help of pipes, they can take the water whenever needed. By using some chemicals, they can filter the water and use the water for their activities. So, in this way, we can harvest the rain water. There is second method that the rain water that is collected on the top of, top of your roofs, it can be drawn through pipes and the pipes can be taken to the percolation tanks that is to the soil, percolation tanks. 
So a percolation tank means you will make a pit in the ground in your nearby your to your house. You will make a pit. In the pit you will put some coal and some sand means the materials which can allow the water to seep down. So when the rain water is connected, the rain water pipe is connected here, the water will seep down into the ground and the ground water levels rise. Your ground water is recharged by this. So this is the second technique. Otherwise, you can simply allow the rain water to go into open land. Then there also it gets submerged. It, it gets percolated. But sometimes what happens, you see, if the water is allowed to run off like that, this runoff water, it collects all the garbage waste and organic waste and all sorts of waste. It becomes the polluted water and it enters the water bodies, finally reaches the sea. Its percolation is very less. The best way to make the water go underground is that arranging percolation tanks. So the water that is collected and the collected water is arranged to go into a pit which allows the water to percolate down into the layers of the earth. So this will recharge the groundwater. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.